Hello everyone, welcome back to Huntcraft. Well, Desolation's Wake is upon us. Patch 116 is out, and we have the full official patch notes. I know everyone will be busy playing the new content, as this is the first weekend, so I'll try to make this video as concise and informative as possible. Patch notes are a bit of a long read. I'll go through it quickly, pointing out the significant or noteworthy changes, then I'll go through the new event mechanics, and I'll put a slide at the end that will summarize all the event activities in case you need to screenshot it for reference, just until it all sinks in and we get familiar with all the new options and mechanics. So first up, the notes. Let's go through them. So we've got two new guns. The first one is the Coldwell Marathon. It's a pump action rifle with compact ammo, and it has both FMJ and poison ammo as special ammo. It unlocks at level 11 in the battle pass, and it has a swift variant that unlocks at level 24. The second one is the Mako 1895 carbine. And it's a long ammo lever action rifle that comes with two types of special ammo, explosive and FMJ. And this one unlocks at level 15. This basically means if you buy the premium battle pass, you get both guns immediately. And this one comes with two variants. The first one is a claw at level 29, and the second one is an aperture at level 33. We also have new custom ammo for existing weapons. The rival gets Dragon Breath, and Crown and King gets Fleshette. We've got an update for Thunder Shower and Ash Bloom timings. Basically, the annoying period in both of these map conditions happens less often. We've got a little buff for explosive ammo. They extended the headshot range. I guess we'll see if that makes players pick it, or it remains to be the meme that it is. And they buffed the Vetali Cyclone. They reduced the recoil. I recently shat on this gun on my Lamat video, and rightfully so. The gun's high fire rate is completely overshadowed by both the small magazine and the erratic, annoying recoil. So maybe that will make players pick it, because I think it rarely gets picked. They increased the damage of the upper mat from 120 to 126. That basically puts it at a point where it can kill players to the body if they're missing one small bar. They've changed the size of the combat axe, katana, and railroad hammer to be small slots instead of medium. They've updated the inspect animation, so now it includes all the tools and consumables, including the beetle. They nerfed Lightfoot, again, so now it triggers the quieter crouch version of sounds when walking through the sound traps. They've also nerfed the knuckle knife a little bit. They've increased the stamina cost of both light and heavy attacks, which annoyingly might affect the video I'm currently working on, as it's all about tools. Hmm, we'll see. They nerfed the antidote shots, so both versions now are cut down in half. This one is quite significant. So they've increased the time to revive a Red Skull teammate. That's a partner that is completely dead, lost all of their health bars. And if you have a bounty token, you can revive them at the cost of your health. The revive now is more than doubled in time. It used to be 4 seconds, now it's 10. And that revive will cost you a burn of 50 health. That means if you have a small bar as your rightmost bar, you will lose that bar permanently to revive your teammate. But the last point of the 50 cannot be lost that way. So if your rightmost bar is a large one, you won't lose it. Refunding traits now always grants you a minimum of one point. So all the traits that cost one point, when you refund them, you used to get zero. Now you'll get one. And they finally reworked the recruit situation. As in the last batch, they made the recruits offer way better value both in equipment and in trait points compared to legendary hunters. So the number of traits offered will now scale up with the recruits tier. And they also created a minimum budget for the trait points on legendary hunters. So they will still roll with three random traits. But if the value of those traits is less than 11, you'll just get them with points to add up to 11. And now hunters can only be retired at level 50. We have two more burner traits added to the pool. They are basically the previous update traits, Rampage and Remedy. 
They've added barrels to allow access to the side building's balcony at King Snake Mine, which is that one. And as expected, they finally nerfed the headsman. Just for the sake of visibility, they change his color, and to be fair, he looks so much cooler now. And that's it for the general patch notes. Now let's look at the event. Admittedly, this event is the most unique out of all the events we've had before. It breaks the expected loop we've had with most of the recent events. You loot your first hunter, you banish a boss, you collect 30 event points, you get a mark for each of those activities to a maximum of 3 per game, and then you pledge to one of the 3 packs, and then you spend those marks to buy the associated traits. This time it's much more streamlined and a little bit crazy, so you can get 4 marks per game instead of 3, and you can spend your marks in a variety of ways, none of which is buying traits. So you can go straight up to a supply point, pledge to the pack that you want, and you get the first trait for free, costs you nothing. And then the second trait is one of the base traits, but it gets a special modifier. So let's have a look at the packs. So we've got three packs, Lawful, Primal and Death Pact. When you pledge to Lawful, you get the trait Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper will allow you to revive a fully dead teammate at the cost of 50 health, which is what you can do only if you had a bounty. It will also restore one burnt health bar when you loot a hunter. And the modified trait with the lawful pact is Pack Mule. It will allow you to restock some ammo when you loot dead hunters. And then for this pact, you get a bonus mark when you banish your first target. And that's how you can get four marks per game instead of three. The second pact is Primal. And when you pledge, you get the trait Berserker. The Berserker trait will double the damage of all your melee attacks. And the modified trait for the Primal Pact is Beast Face, and it will make you completely unnoticeable by animals. And then for this pact, you earn a bonus mark when you get your first 30 event points. And the final pact is the Death Pact, and for that one when you pledge, you get the trait called Witness. Witness will allow you to see both dead hunters and monsters, when you're in dark side, and when you're close to them, you'll start regening health. And the modified trait for Death Pact is Resilience, which will allow you to revive dead teammates in half of the time. This sounds really cool. And for this pact, you earn a bonus mark when you loot your first hunter. Now all of this costs no marks, so let's look at the ways to spend our marks. The rewards that you can get by spending your marks can be found at watchtowers, arsenals, supply points, and hunting towers. And then there is three exclusive rewards that you can only find at the sealed cache. Now what is the sealed cache? The sealed cache is a new unique type of supply point that spawns only in one location in the center of the map. The sealed cache will have a random variety of rewards each game. Most of those rewards can spawn outside of it, as I mentioned, but there are three rewards that are unique and can only be found in the sealed cache. And those three are obviously the craziest ones. The more common rewards are full restock box. This will restock all of your ammo and tools, and this costs one mark. Four shot boon, which will give you all the syringe shot effects, and that costs one mark. Experience boon, which will give you a large amount of XP, for also one mark, and a big cash register, which will give you, I think, only $500. At least I've never seen it give any more or less, but maybe I'm wrong. And it also costs one mark. All of those mentioned rewards are accessible to every hunter once per game. And for one mark, you can use the explosives box, which will give you three explosive consumables. This box is exclusive, which means it's only accessible once per game to the first hunter that gets to it. And then the next three rewards can only spawn in the sealed cache. The first reward of those unique rewards in the sealed cache is full health restoration. This costs one mark and it triggers the restoration effect, which heals the whole team 
and restores all missing health chunks. And this one is not exclusive. And those last two are exclusive and pretty crazy. For one mark, you can get a master clue, which will reveal all the bosses on the map. And the second one is an actual bounty sitting there waiting to be looted for two marks. And this bounty only spawns in single target maps. Those two rewards, from what I've seen, have significantly changed the dynamic of most games, as players will often dash straight to the middle just to get to these rewards before anyone else, and end up with multiple team fights. The sealed cache also has a lot of spine altars around it, so even if you don't have any marks, you will surely hit 30 by the time you get to it, so you know you can at least get the master clue. I think that's it for all the info you need for the event. I'll use the same slide Crytek made for the Halloween event and update it a little bit. Feel free to screenshot it and keep it handy in case you need a quick reminder of all the event details. Please let me know in the comments what you think of the event, the new mechanics and systems and the two new guns. And if you felt that this video is informative enough or helped you in any way, please remember to like and subscribe. Happy hunting everyone and see you in the next one.